Hi, it's The Wire. It's the day of the fight for the Undisputed Heavyweight Championship. Tyson Fury, unbeaten, one draw. He has beaten every man he has faced. Avenge the draw with multiple victories over Deontay Wilder. With Usyk, unbeaten, same thing. This is looking out at the world from the top floor of the tallest building, right? Let me also make a point here. Just understand that the first fight is the biggest fight because that's the only fight where the winner is going to be the undisputed heavyweight champion. This is boxing. They do strange things. They're going to peel away the portion of the title that really belongs to Philippe Ergovic after this fight. Right? Let me also make another point, too. People need to realize that the undisputed heavyweight champion is not unbeatable. Boxing has a rich history more than 20 years ago. Lennox Lewis, and he's a great, right? If you remember the era Lewis was fighting the guys who we thought were on par with him. Michael Grant, for example, unbeaten at the time he fought Lewis. Lewis, of course, came to the United States for that match. Won it by early KO. You might recall all the buzz about David Tua being the new Mike Tyson. In that fight, Lennox Lewis on his back foot behind the jab dismantles him. Understand how Lewis leaves the building. Lewis fights Vitaly Klitschko, who himself would have the title for several years later in his career. And of course, Lewis beats him. Right? Klitschko has a cut. The referee felt that he could not go on. Apparently, Lennox Lewis realized that his best days were behind him. That's the last fight Lewis had. But I also need for people to understand that Lennox Lewis, after winning the undisputed championship, would later get knocked out by Haseem Rockman. Right? Lewis avenges himself in the rematch, but just understand, the night that matters most in boxing is fight night. If you can beat a guy nine times out of ten, but that tenth time is the night of the fight, then you're not the winner. You're not the champion. So let's look at this fight carefully. Let's just give an overview. I've already done a couple of videos, a few videos on this fight. Here are some of the keys to look for. The first is that Usyk is a slow starter. In my opinion, and it might be controversial, Tyson Fury needs to win both of the first two rounds to have a chance to win by decision. Right? Splitting them, in my opinion, is too dangerous. If Usyk comes out fast and wants a shootout, right? This is a special event. The fighters might try to surprise the other one. If Usyk comes out and wants a shootout, if I'm Tyson Fury, whatever plans I have made for the fight, whatever agenda my corner might have, I give Usyk the shootout. Why? Because I'm the bigger man. I'm the heavier man. This guy's in my division. Right? He wants a shootout. Let's have a shootout. In part also because a fight might favor the bigger man. A boxing match might favor the smaller man. I want folks, too, to look carefully at the hand speed on the inside. I expect Usyk to have the hand speed advantage up close. I think that's going to be a big problem, that Tyson Fury is going to have to find a way to deal with. I think that's a big challenge for Tyson Fury. Look at the clinching. If Fury tries to clinch, 
but can't. He's going to have problems up close. In other words, you're fighting a guy who is the faster-handed guy up close. Let's say you try to clinch him like Ali clinched Joe Fraser illegally, by the way, in the rematch. Right? Put his hand behind Fraser's neck. One of the secrets to the thriller in Manila is that Carlos Padilla would not allow Ali to do so. Right? If you see Tyson Fury trying to clinch Usyk and he can't, this fight could turn into a thriller in Manila. Fury's going to have problems. Right? When a guy has a hand speed advantage, when he throws shorter punches than you, and you can't clinch him inside, you've got to have a plan B. Let's talk about other things to look for. Fury's offense. Is he landing body shots? Now, I understand I might be in the minority. I doubt that, by the way, but I might be in the minority here. I feel the body shot that Daniel Dubois landed on Usyk was legal. I've looked at a lot of these angles. I've looked at the fight film several times. It looks legal to me. It's not below the belt line. Fury folds up like a lawn chair. Now, if I'm Tyson Fury and I come inside and this cruiserweight guy is riddling me with shots and I can't quite find him to clinch him because he does a good sidestep, right? One way to deal with fire is to meet fire with fire. I would then start going to his body. The problem against the southpaw with throwing rights to the body is Usyk might counter the right with a straight left, his dominant hand. So focus on Tyson Fury's left hand. Is he digging in with body shots off his left? Is Usyk then trying to move toward Fury's right to get away from left-handed body shots? What does Fury do then? Does he try to, as Usyk's on the move, read Usyk's movement, <coughs> figure out when Usyk can throw counters and when he can't, and time right hands either up top or to Usyk's body when Usyk is not in a position to throw the counter? Also, look at Usyk too. If he's getting hit with body shots, does he take them to stay in the pocket to throw a counter? Is he timing Tyson Fury? Look at the pace of the fight too. Folks, I'm expecting there to be at least a shootout in two of the rounds. By a shootout, I mean both guys. High volume. Letting their hands go. I think the lesson we've learned of the Usyk Anthony Joshua fights is you can't be cautious with Alexander Usyk. Now let me say this too. Again, boxing has a rich history. Does either fighter go over to the ropes like Ali did against Joe Fraser in their first fight? By the way, Great footage, I believe it's first or second round. Fraser gets Ali up against the ropes. Right? Ali looks full of himself. Fraser then proceeds to land a home run left hook on Ali's jaw. Ali, at that time unbeaten, shakes his head to the crowd because understand, Ali, like Ray Leonard, had a relationship with the crowd in the middle of fights. Ali shakes his head to the crowd to let the crowd know that big left hook, it's over height. It hasn't phased me. The problem was he was fighting Joe Fraser. Fraser continues throwing left hooks. Right? Look at the beginning, the first four rounds of the Ali Fraser fight. 
They're noteworthy because it's clear to me that Joe Frazier is going for the early stoppage. Now in this fight, is there a moment where a Tyson Fury decides, you know what, this Usyk guy is slippery in the middle of the ring. Let me go over to the ropes. Let me lounge by the ropes. It worked for Ali against George Foreman years later. Right, let me go over the ropes and show the world that this guy doesn't have the power to knock me out. Or are we going to get a revelation where the bigger man, just like Ali, goes over to the ropes and then the shorter man comes in and shows us that he has more power than we thought. Let's remember that Dubois fight does not go the distance. I will say if you want to see Anthony Joshua grateful to hear the end of a round, revisit the 12th round of Usyk's first fight against Anthony Joshua. Right? The question here is, where do they fight? Does either guy have a plan somewhere along the line to try to have the other guy throw himself out, to try to put his back up against the ropes to take a breather or to pace himself? Now, let's be cognizant, too, of crowd dynamics. Let's think about us. We're part of this fight. Understand, like Ali Fraser, and that's a spectacular trilogy. It's one of boxing's best trilogies, right? I know critics will point out that Fraser dominates the first fight, and he does. You know Fraser has that fight in the bag with rounds to go. And we know the second fight is a bit marred by Ali pushing on the back of Fraser's neck. Right? We understand that the Ali Fraser trilogy is really the thriller in Manila and the hype for the buildup before the first fight. The fact that both guys were unbeaten and both guys had a claim to the heavyweight title. Right? Well, let me just say here you have the same hype dynamic. The smaller man, even though he's bigger than Sonny Liston, the smaller man is Alexander Usyk. Now here's a thought we should ponder. Will we know who's winning the fight by the start of the 10th round? And if we do, if at the start of the 10th round, the mood in the room is that Alexander Usyk is ahead, I'm just here to tell you that no one roots for Goliath. If the smaller man is ahead, even though the odds on this fight are relatively equal, if the smaller man who's had the heavyweight title the shorter period of time, if he's ahead entering the 10th round, and understand Usyk is a guy with spectacular stamina, I would say he has better stamina than Tyson Fury. If Usyk's ahead, the crowd is going to join his crusade. The crowd's going to be on his side. The last three rounds are going to be him showing you why he's about to be the undisputed heavyweight champion. But, if we start the 10th round and the bigger man is ahead, Tyson Fury is ahead, let me just let you in on a secret, right? Big guys know that no one roots for Goliath. If you have a friend and he's like 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, right? Talk to him about height. You have big man Chet Holgren, Oklahoma City Thunder, who won't even stand up straight. Look at Chet, he's always hunched forward. Look at Kareem when you see him, he's always hunched forward. Right, if Tyson Fury has the lead with three rounds to go, the question is, does he step on the gas to try to get the stoppage? I believe there's a distinct possibility. Right, he'll know 
okay, I'm Goliath. Okay, I'm not as loved as some others in the division. Hell, I'm not even, and this is my opinion, I'm not even the most popular heavyweight in the United Kingdom. I believe the love affair is between fans and Anthony Joshua. So I believe if Tyson Fury enters the later rounds, let's remember how late it was in his last fight against Deontay Wilder when he stopped Wilder. I believe if Tyson Fury, after all this hoopla, after this big challenge uh, from a guy who's not his height, who's not his weight, I believe if Tyson Fury has the lead going into the 10th round, I believe the competitor in him is going to come out winning the undisputed championship will not be enough he's going to go for a late stoppage might not get it because Usyk's defensively blessed but I believe he's going to go for a late stoppage right I think he understands he is viewed as a Goliath. The fans don't love him like they love some others. Right? So at that point, I believe Fury might make a decision to take it out of the hands of the judges. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. Let's enjoy the fight, and I hope you stop by after the fight with your post-fight thoughts. Thanks for stopping by.